Hello Floss my name is Tamara and in today's video I um, will show you again the project uh, of Alvira's Frightful House. Yes, I'm going to go through this one one more time. But happily, this one is going to be a happy ending. And um, also I'm going to show you what... Uh, um, I mean, what uh, progress I have on the Haunted Cottage by uh, Mill Hill, the kit by Mill Hill. And also, also, I have a new project. It's going to be, again, Halloween project. It's October. It's the month of Halloween projects. I decided to film in between some things to show you how uh, this uh, project is being stitched, what um, I have been doing with it. Um, so, the thing is that I have finished the whole, how do how they say, house parts, yes, because these are the, the parts of the house. And I would tell you that this is not an easy and quick uh, work to do. Um, and I am trained in stitching just now. First of all, I think that uh, this is because there is quite a lot of stitching. The colors, uh, I mean, like, uh, there are a few stitches of one color, a few stitches of another color. They change it, um, pretty fast. You have to take another color. And the back stitch, there is quite a lot of back stitch. You know, that tiny, tiny back stitch, <laughs> which is uh, present in some of uh, Nan's um, designs. So it's not going fast. Um, the thing which I have uh, done here, like, I've made all the stitches, all the back stitch. I made the uh, border here, border back stitch. The only thing which I have to finish here is to attach the beads. I need to attach purple beads on the fans, the black fans. And I have to attach uh, orange stripe beads here where the garland is, like here. And I have to attach uh, the spider um, charm uh, on the door. By the way, speaking about the garland, you know, um, last time when I was presenting you this design, I said that uh, I had already stitched like the bottom part, this uh, part of the house, like this windows uh, and the upper part. And I was starting this part and I haven't used um, the Wix that works autumn leaves yet. Um, apparently I made a mistake. I was wrong because I made a mistake. Because when I was stitching this one, you know, I was looking at the back stitch and I see that the window panes, like they have window frame, yes, they had the back stitch. And I said, okay. I looked in the description and I couldn't see what color this back stitch is made of. There were no ref there was no reference. And I said, okay, but did I do any back stitch here? No, I didn't. I looked on the, the chart on my time and yes, on the chart there was back stitch here. And I said, okay, something is not okay. Took the chart one more time because apparently I was so quick in starting the design and I didn't pay attention. So the chart itself, it comes kind of like this, the preview. Be careful because the sign, the how do I say, the symbols and the, the uh, like the color you have to use for the symbol is here. Because I was looking in the beginning, couldn't find this one, but you need this one. Then it comes in two parts like this. So here you have just a big. A uh, piece of paper where you have like a, an out kind of like this and here it's a like a book where you should read carefully because in the beginning there is the story of Alvira's frightful house then there are the general instruction then it says the frightful house the border lines and when I got to the border lines I read this one then it's the roof section I said okay I don't need the roof section because I'm still um, stitching the house and the border lines, and I don't need the rest, and I didn't read. But apparently, the house back stitching, it says that lines and the window, window frames, they should may be made with uh, 310, and garlands at the roof line with two strands of Wix Dye Works autumn leaves. Yeah. And the thing is that this garland, I made it in black. I suppose that it was black. That's why here, so from the very beginning, I made it correctly. I came back here, I uh, made the back stitch here in the w window frame, it wasn't made, I made it, and I um, took away, I ripped the back stitch which was in black and I did it in autumn leaves. But nevertheless, in the whole stitching you are seeing here now, 
this window, this uh, autumn leaves, it was used only for these garlands, nothing more. I looked for the rest of the, the um, stitching I have to make and no, this one is not needed a lot. So this is going to be used the least at, at all, I would say. And uh, from if to speak about the other, other wixes, uh, London Fog is not so much, but I think I don't need it anymore, or at least I need a little bit somewhere, and that's it. Onyx, I will need it to connect when I'm going to connect everything, and Bark, if I'm not wrong, I'm, I still need it more in the uh, owl. I'm not sure. So it should be enough because it doesn't say to buy two, uh, two skeins of any of these uh, colors, something like this. So I wanted to tell you, be careful when you are reading the... Okay, maybe you are. <laughs> maybe you are careful and you have the patience to read everything. I didn't have the patience, that's why don't be like me. Do it the other way. And in this book, each page has, uh, the, for example, one page has the back the, the um, uh, charts, the bottom and the this upper part charts, and like underneath it's written of the backstitch and everything, what to do it with. Then one page has this one, this one, this one, so on and so forth. So in detail, we have absolutely everything here. And in the end, uh, there is the um, description of how to do the finishing and some templates, something like this, you see? Okay, one more thing I did here, and um, I used to do it, I did it, I don't know if I did it in other cube finishes so far, but I know for sure that in um, Tea with Honey cube I did it. So the thing is that um, the chart, it says that you start from here, and you go like this, you stitch everything like this, you see? But I um, stitched like these three parts like this. Then when it came the time for this one, I turned it like this and I stitched it like this, you see? Then came time for this one, I stitched it like this and this one I stitched it like this. So that when I'm going to finish it in a cube, uh, wherever part you're going to look, it's going to be stitched like front stitchy kind of, you understood probably what craziness I'm speaking about. This is not obligatory, this is just, I don't know, the thing. It doesn't make a great, great difference in your stitches, you know, but it was just my thing to, to do it. But you have to pay attention to the symbols if you are turning it like that. So, um, coming to this point, I have, as I said, I have to attach the beads here. Not a lot of them, the charm. And this one is going to be ready, but nevertheless, I have to stitch the four triangles of the uh, roof, uh, which I suppose is not going to be so difficult because there are some elements and it's made like with this gray color. Uh, the um, um, Elvira, <laughs> the uh, owl, this is full stitch. I mean, like, uh, she's not big, but everything is stitched here. I don't know how much time it's going to take. And wanted to tell you that at this point, I kind of um, got tired, I would say, because I was teaching the last uh, couple of days, I was teaching this one intensively, you know, and I kind of got tired of it. And I said that uh, I don't want to stitch this one like, uh, because I have to, I'm going to stitch it because I like to. That's why I decided to take a new project, continue stitching this one, but with a slower speed <laughs> and take a new project, which is going to be a, a fresh breath uh, into my stitching. So uh, the one I'm going to start, this is going to be Emil Hill. This is going to be the Haunted Cottage. They are quite new release, I would say. I have my tray, one of my trays. I said, what if I'm going to try to use this one as an organizer? I already uh, select, have not selected, uh, sorted the, the threads, the DMC threads. So this is the beautiful threads are going to be used here. Pretty many, 21. Uh, shades. Uh, then uh, initially I made a copy of the chart and initially I said that I'm going to stitch on fabric. I have navy fabric uh, even weave from uh, Zweigart. I said that I'm going to stitch on even weave but when I made the copy of the chart I saw that this one is fully stitched so fully. There are no like uh, spaces where the uh, fabric is going to be seen. That's why I said that I'm not going to complicate myself. I'm going to stitch on the um, uh, paper, the perforated paper, yes, and uh, the in this organizer, 
I have the beads and I used also in the past to organize uh, the beads. I mean, like select the beads per color for this uh, Mill Hill designs. But now I decided to try something new. <laughs> so this is the button and the three bags of beads. I just uh, like uh, um, put them in separate these things. I'm going to use them and the leftover I'm to sort already. It's going to be less, much less. And I'm going to sort it out in my uh, uh, like bid organizer because I have all my purchases of Mill Hill and uh, leftovers from uh, Mill Hill designs. I'm like organizing and I have a pretty nice collection of Mill Hill beads uh, so, so far. So, um, yes, I'm going to introduce this design as well. I'm going to stitch them both parallelly. I don't know, one day one, one day the other, or maybe in the morning I'm going to stitch one, in the evening I'm going to stitch, or throughout the day I'm going to stitch another one. I don't know how I'm going to do this, but uh, what I know for sure is that I want to introduce a, a new project, a fresh breath, a fresh, uh, how they say, <laughs> a fresh design into my uh, stitching, uh, day by day stitching and of course i'll let you know how this one are how these ones are going on and again <laughs> alvira's frightful house because it's not ready yet so i am uh, how they say i'm ready to finish it so i have done everything everything <laughs> you know when you're cooking um, a dish where you have to prepare a lot of things before cooking itself, you know, like peeling, uh, chopping, <laughs> I don't know, things like this. So this is the feeling I have with this design, you know. I don't know, either this design is, um, how do I say, a little bit more difficult. I mean, uh, more stitching or it's me who is stitching it more slow, uh, slower, I don't know. But the thing is that finally, finally, I have stitched any everything. I have cut everything and I have prepared everything and the last step I have to do is like doing the biscornu stitch and put everything together. Wanted to show you some uh, details uh, throughout my, my preparing. <laughs> so this is the uh, base of the house or the house itself. It looks like the usual cube you have stitched if you stitched any cubes by Jasna. The only thing I did which is not in the um, instructions so um i uh, used fray check here to, so that when i'll go, when i'm going to put it together it the edges won't go more and sometimes it disturbs me when you have like this uh, phrase here and i also made a kind of cut here you see everywhere because when you are stitching and you are like moving this one's inside uh, this one is very bulky here and i also used fray check so that it wouldn't go any far and this side I have uh, interfusible facing or however this one is called so that the um, um, the parts would look uh, would look nicer kind of like this okay uh, then I have uh, Alvira Alvira it was it's little but everything is stitched here uh, the eyes the paillette eyes, you see, um, take into account that I made the count larger. I was thinking if uh, it's going to be enough this unstitched space here, but it's enough because I was intending to have uh, one more row of yellow stitches here, but it wasn't uh, necessary. So this one, it's okay. And also has interfusible facing. For this one, I already prepared the hat because she will need the hat. Everything was in the embellishment pack. I just used the um, Mill Hill um, bead needle because I'm using to collect them from the Mill Hill kits I stitched and I have pretty many so far. So because this one is short and it's uh, sharp, that's why I used one like this and I used the paillette and uh, the bead which were in the um, in the embellishment pack. By the way, speaking about the embellishment pack, these are the beads leftovers, only these ones. And uh, there are two things, hairpins as they are called. Initially, I didn't know what they are for, but apparently when I'm going to put together Alvira, and I have to stuff her, by the way, I have to put them here, then make these ones like in V, like larger, and these are going to be her 
uh, legs because this is a standing uh, owl, <laughs> standing owl. Okay, and I um, haven't finished with the house, the roof of the house. The four parts which form the roof of the house. This were really, really, really the ones which gave me most work to be done. Okay, so this ones, it was said that um, I should have, I should fold the uh, edges. Uh, put here a piece of um, uh, ribbon. So the ribbon which was there, I cut into four equal pieces. I think it was kind of 12 or 15 centimeters for each of them, something like this. And um, here I had to take a piece of felt, felt which was in the kit, it's this one cut nicely the triangle and like uh, attach it with whipping stitch attach it here and here and be careful here not to use the stitches which are here because they are going to be used for attaching the roof to the house kind of like this yes yes okay so far so good explanation was clear what i have done I have done a stupid thing <laughs> because I thought that I would be very smart uh, and I would to do um, something which will make me work less. I took, um, I don't know how this one is called, the kind of interfusible facing, no, the kind, I don't know how this one is called, interfusible facing, the one which you put between two fabrics and when you put the iron on top, uh, and the hot iron on top, it melts and it gets the two pieces of fabric together. So, what I did, I just uh, put this piece of um, ribbon, uh, then I put the triangle cut of the, that inter, like let's say, um, sticking interface, and put uh, the triangle with uh, of the um, um, this one triangle this one and put the iron here and uh, the situation was the following so uh, it glued it stick together but uh, the felt became uh, very very flat and kind of compact you know and I had the feeling that it, it a, a little bit it shrinked and the um, iron wasn't very, very hot. I had even the feeling that it shrinked a little bit, you know, I kind of got scared, but everything was okay. Um, and um, in one case, I think it was, yes, I, when I put the iron, the felt moved a little bit like this. And here I had the space and the um, but piece of uh, felt was here. Okay, this one I could cut, but here I couldn't add. Um, nevertheless, I thought that I would take some, um, um, how do I say, um, thread and uh, stitching, attaching it together, I'm going to compensate that one with thread. And I did it. And it was late evening. And I thought, okay, it looks okay, but I'm going to check in the morning to see if this idea was good. When I took them in the morning, I was so like, how could I do this? How could I be so stupid? They looked awful, awful. Okay, what I have done, I looked in my stash and I found some black felt. Yes, it's simple. Why well, didn't take this one? Not because it's bad, but because it wouldn't have been enough probably. And I took the black felt. I measured for each of them like a triangle, cut it accordingly. Took kind of, this is beading needle. Mm, not invisible one, but black one, very strong one. Took this one and um, needle, beading needle, and very, very carefully I attached it. So I have two um, fabric, I mean, uh, we felt I have two, uh, two felts here, two pieces of felt. But the first one is very uh, compact, very com compre comprimated, how should I say? Okay, this saved the situation. Again, it's not perfect, but in comparison with what it looked like, this one is better, much better. I'll see how it's going to look when I'm going to put everything together, but so far it's okay. And uh, I have to figure out how to do this one because I will have to do um, 
this movement for more uh, future designs from just now because there are the you know like the uh, four mice in a, um, how they say the house which is kind of like um, envelope so all of them and there are even bigger the things i don't know i have to figure out how to do these things because uh, i want to do them nicely because this was a stressing awful experience okay and uh, i need such a um, cardboard for the uh, uh, you see and this one is small the one which was little this is how it looks like that's why i cut one which is bigger mine used uh, this kind i forgot how they are called this one i used in my uh, used them in my half dolls for being like uh, heavier i used two i think i overreacted one it would have been enough but i'll see because this one is going to be introduced in the end you see this one is good i already did it and that's it i am ready uh, one more thing which was interesting for me, I say I said that this is the first house I'm uh, assembling. That's why for me it's interesting. I don't know why I was sure that I have to do first the uh, uh, house. You see, like a, do it together like a cube, and then attach the roof. But in the instructions say to attach first to attach the roof parts and then do the house. My only logical explanation is that uh, doing this one in the beginning it's going to be much easier because you can bend the thing and you can do it like nicely you see and because if this one is going to be already finished and put together it's going to be much much difficult to uh, to do this one okay maybe not much difficult but for sure it's going to be more difficult so um yeah I'm going to assemble it. I think I'm going to start with the house and then I'm going to do the owl and I hope that in a few seconds, you already will see the finished, assembled design, Alvira and her house. And finally, after so much whining and saying that it's a difficult design, that uh, I spend a lot of time, that I cannot do this, I cannot do that. Finally, finally, I finished this uh, project of mine. Yes, the house is finally built. It's here. This is how it looks like. I am um, not satisfied by, uh, how they say, um, a part of it, and uh, but I'm not going to remake it. I'm just going to take into account for my uh, future designs, uh, which imply um, this uh, element. So, speaking about the cube, which forms the house, I am very contented of how this one looks like. I would say it's good. But speaking about the roof and the parts of the roof, and by the way, when you start uh, attaching, do as the uh, instruction says first, attach these sides and then construct the cube and then fill it in. Because if you're going to make the cube first and then try to attach this one, it's going to be very difficult. That's why it's the um, uh, instructions they say about like this, this aspect. Okay, so I uh, attached these things and after attaching them, while attaching them, I noticed a mistake which uh, was made. And um, um, I suppose, I suppose that the mistake is um, was made because of the fact that um, I changed the uh, uh, fabric count. And uh, when uh, making the, uh, how they are called, uh -huh. templates you see when using the templates i didn't use these templates because they don't fit the uh, the, the count for fabric i have i have a larger fabric i have the 30th count but according to the key it should be 32nd and um i did it like uh, on eye or how they say not not measuring anything and i suppose this was a mistake because you see these sides here you see um, these angles, they are too large because when like uh, putting the roof together, they kind of, um, how do I say, not Q, they're kind of like, they're not fitting here. You see, especially this one, this one, I don't like it at all how it looks like, but I don't have any other solutions. I cannot do anything. I cannot cut because this one is uh, stitched. This one is attached and so on and so forth. And when like putting everything together, you see, it doesn't stay like this. The roof, is, the roof has huge cracks. <laughs> Okay, so this would be the, the thing which I'm not um, uh, happy about, but I'll think how to do it uh, better and better because, as I said, I have future plans with future designs and I have in my stash 
uh, designs which imply this this thing so i have to think how to deal with this one especially i think the the most problematic thing is here so here i have to think how to to work out so that they wouldn't uh, stay like outside the cube as i said the cube is is good i wouldn't say perfect but the cube is uh, is good so this is how it looks like as i said that i'm going to show you the beauty of the stitches and the design itself um, i'm going to show it when it's going to be stitched so um, by the way when attaching as i said i think i said uh, they tell you which part of the roof goes which with which wall of the of the house and the entrance is here here is the um, uh, door the door has eyes by the way some crows or blackbirds on the um, um, pumpkins which are on a pole and a lot of ghosts in this design by the way a lot of ghosts and here is the beautiful nice fence and the gate the entrance and here there is a um, ghost uh, on the roof uh, these elements of the roof they are the same everywhere and this uh, the other three contain only uh, windows and something which goes out of that window. So here is a bat on the roof. Then we have, um, this is a mummy, if I'm not wrong, um, ghosts, frogs. And the frogs, I remember being stitched with two color of threads and a lot of back stitch. And the eyes come one uh, cross stitch in white thread and a kind of uh, half stitch of um, back stitch. Yeah. Then some white pumpkins on this uh, beautiful f uh, fence as well. Then this side, this is a skeleton mummy, like skeleton uh, ghost, something like this, it was called. And then again, ghost, 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 pumpkin, pumpkin, camp, pumpkins, spiders, a lot of these things. And the last one, it's uh, a large spider. There, this is an owl, again, pumpkins. This one's a very angry one, a skeleton here. And that's it. And on the... Uh, bottom uh there is there are two mice uh, this is a snake by the way and uh, this is a tombstone i think yeah uh speaking about the beads so uh, the charm i mean like the spider is attached on the door the beads the uh, orange striped beads they are used in the garland here so they come like five everywhere so you will need 20 no more but the um, petite uh, beautiful um, purple uh, beads they come here like on the fence and the gate and everywhere it's quite a lot this one and that's it about the beads which come and the embellishments which come on the outside and if we are to open it open it open it how did i do how did i do i did it twice so that it would hold i hope but you see what it happens because if you're doing just once uh-huh yeah it's, it's working so this ones go like this and this ones sorry for keeping you this ones go like this and when you open it by the way it looks pretty pretty okay <laughs> so i like this this side of the the house the attic and the, the roof as i said i remade this part and it looks pretty okay the um, frog and this is the top i don't have any um, how do i say it? any pins yet yet and here comes in the attic it should be the owl and here is my owl yes nice one this one this is how it looks like so i would say this one was a pretty complicated very small and uh, pretty much time it took for me to finish it so um, as i said here everything is stitched if you look on the back uh, approximately everything is stitched and it has this payetza's eyes beautiful one also has some beads here the black and the uh, uh, purple beads uh, by the way i noticed a mistake here so um, if you look in the key according to the key the beads you have to attach here are purple and not black but this uh, orange stripey ones you see and i was listening something on youtube and like attaching the beads and uh, i looked in the key uh, took the bead 
I look like, okay, this sign, this is uh, the orange um, striped bead. And I started like attaching. I attached one or two. And I stopped. I said, oh, something is not okay because, you know, this one's a petite. And when you are attaching them, they look like nicely. But that one is a bit, a little bit larger. And attaching it, you see that something is not okay. I stopped, looked, looked one more time in the key. And yes, according to the key, I was right. But I looked on the... Um, um, preview and you see on the preview you can see evidently that it's not purple it's not uh, orange it's um, it's black that's why I use the black one so be careful when you are stitching your own um, on the back you see it doesn't have beads it has the moon and it has a bat also the years the years it was said to use one uh, like uh, piece of uh, <laughs> DMC thread I mean like six uh, threads you see I used the at first one, but I didn't like. I thought it looks like I don't know. And I used the two. I, I have twelve threads here, twelve threads here. This is why I wanted to tell you. The hat I already showed that I prepared it. It's already here, and it has its own space. And uh, the legs, the legs, you see, it's the uh, pins which were there. I attached them uh, at first with the uh, Biscornu stitch, as it was said, but I didn't like um, how they were, like, uh, they didn't, how do they say? It wasn't enough, so I uh, used the uh, thread uh, a few more times so that they would stay here, like, uh, okay. I cut a piece of them because you don't need them so long. You just make them, like, the uh, end. It's standing, you see? And by the way, this one is filled with um, poly pellets, you know, the plastic thing, which are a little bit uh, heavier because when you, it, it, it's not, you see, it's not soft as, uh, as this one. It's, it's like this nice one. I really, really happy. I'm really happy about this one. Really, really nice. I'm happy about the whole design because it's a beautiful, nice one. It's a very complex one. Okay. Again, maybe it's me, maybe it's me, but for me, this design uh, proved to be a complex one, by the way, and I'm not a beginner in stitching just nan. You know that I'm uh, stitching quite quite a lot of uh, just nan. I mean, like these 3D things which have to be um, not only stitched, like, uh, um, I mean, uh, samplers, they have to be finished as well. Okay, uh, so this is it, this is it. I will be happy to see how other stitchers are doing their part. I mean, like, to see this one stitched and finished, uh, you know, by other hands. And if you speak about the materials, about DMC threads, I won't tell you anything because it's DMC. I cannot even tell you how much I use because, you know, I have the bobbins and when a uh, color uh, of uh, thread finishes, I usually... Uh, look into my stash if I have this one, like the new one. If I don't have, I'm ordering it, I'm buying it. So I don't have any idea about the embellishment pack. So this is the only thing which leaves from the huge embellishment pack. Huge. Okay. Large embellishment pack, which you have in the beginning. Not enough for a second stitch. I don't know. I didn't count the orange ones. By the way, the orange ones you need only for this garland here. Like you need 20, 20 um beads and that's it but the purple ones the you need a lot they are small and you need a lot you need for the owl and you need also for the fence the black ones are also not used the black ones come only in the um, in the owl and they are a little uh, speaking about the um, threads the wicks that works because they are the specialty threads used here so uh, as i told you if i told you the autumn leaves is the one which is used less at all because it was needed like only in this uh, backstitch of this garland on four all four parts of the house and that's it and it also was needed in the cross stitches for this moon which is the background of the bat you see yes it's beautiful yes it's nice but only for this one so almost i almost didn't use it let's say so uh, then i used the quite a lot from bark this is the leftover all of them were new uh, quite a lot of London fog. You see how much I have left. 
and I almost used everything from Onyx. Uh, okay, yes, I admit that I used it uh, wrongly here on this uh, underneath part. But anyway, with uh, that part which I used, uh, it would have been a little bit, like, I mean, like maybe 30, maybe 20, 20 centimeters more. But uh, anyway, it's going to be uh, used a lot. So a leftover wouldn't work. You have, you'll have to buy a new skein, uh, totally new skein, if you want to start with uh, this design. And this is how it looks like. I'm really, really happy that finally I finished this one. Not perfect. I have to, I learned the lesson. I have to perfect myself, but such a beautiful, nice house form. For Alvira, I already have. And uh, the next design I'm going to stitch, just nine design, yes, because this one, <laughs> this one is ready. And um, I have one more design, uh, Halloween design by Jasnan, which I want to stitch. This was um, a dream of mine to stitch this design. Um, I uh, It's an out of uh, print design, of course, of course. <laughs> uh, and uh, I said a couple of times, I think in my videos, uh, if, uh, any, if somebody has uh, the chart uh, to share it with me, I think I said. Okay, so the happy moment came and um, somebody, uh, told me, you know, you were looking for that chart. I said, yes. And she said that uh, uh, a stitcher who has uh, the uh, chart and the embellishment pack in her stash, uh, she um, shared it with me. And I said, oh my God, I'm so happy. And she shared the uh, chart with me and I started looking for materials, um, thinking that I am going to be able to um, kit it myself and stitch, stitch it from scratch, as I used to say. Okay, so um, what is going to be a cube? It's going to be a cube of uh, this uh, uh, this form. Yes, I have the owls. Um, this one is the first one which was released, but this is not from original uh, uh, thing done. So I uh, stitched it uh, on uh, the fabric on my, of my choice. This is the 27th uh, count. Uh, with the embellishment pack, which I <laughs> tried to find, but I'm really, really happy that I managed to stitch this one. And you know what's interesting? That in the autumn, when I was stitching this one, Just Nan made the reprint uh, of uh, this uh, cube, but it was like on a different fabric with different, a little bit, uh, ch some changes, some changes, but still it looks more or less the same. And I knew that there is a Halloween one, uh, the same, with the same form, I mean, but which is on purple fabric, and I wanted so much this one to be stitched. I'm going to insert a, a preview, a photo of the preview, how this one should look like, because the it's a Halloween one, because these ones are kind of Halloween-y autumn ones, but this one is a pure Halloween uh, design. The cube is going to be stitched on the, this Peoria purple, I think. Yeah, Peoria purple, Wix Dye Works uh, linen. Uh, according to the key, the linen should be 30 second count. Again, I'm going to take a larger count. This is the 30th because, because I want this one to be in between. So this one is huge, this one is smaller, but this one should be like uh, kind of uh, in between these two. That's why I took a larger uh, count. And also for the, um, the stitches are made only with DMC threads. Some of them are here, not all of them, because I haven't uh, worked out the uh, materials for this design. So I, the rest of the DMC threads are still in the box for which was used to stitch this one. So I'm going to take them from there and put here and I'll have all the DMC threads. No speciality threads here, by the way. Uh, then I need beads. I need um, the key says uh, orange crystal bead. From what I had, I mean the Mill Hill beads, I chose uh, 02096 and 02033. Um, I'll see which one are going to be appropriate when I'm going to have the stitched um, cross stitches. I mean like the thread stitches and I'll realize which one is going to fit better. I'm going to choose from this one. Um, the problem is that I haven't seen uh, this design being stitched, I mean, on um, on YouTube. If you know somebody who stitched the design, just tell me, because I don't know. Okay. And also the two charms are needed uh, for, for the cube. Uh, a bat is needed. The bat should be like this. You see, I have a pin. And I have a design, a Halloween design, which has this bat. 
I don't have it like this, but I just purchased the uh, simple beds. They were silver and I colored it like in black. It's smaller, I know it's smaller, but I think it looks okay. When attaching it, I'll see. Uh, I'll try to attach this one if it's, because it, can, it has to be um, over the door. If it's going to look okay, I'm going to leave this one because see, this one is pretty large, you see. If this uh, one is going to look bad, maybe, maybe I'm going to take the one which I have in the original uh, embellishment pack from one of my just um, uh, charts. And I also need a spider. And the spider I need, it should be like this, meaning like uh, in silver and small. I don't know why, but I couldn't find small spiders. I don't know why. That's why everywhere was where I was looking, like I was looking, there were just the large ones. I purchased large ones. This one was silver, and I colored it in black, hoping that black makes it look smaller. <laughs> okay, uh, but meanwhile, I found um, I found uh, some uh, spiders, uh, which according to the description and the measurements they give there, they should be smaller. I ordered them. They haven't come come yet came yet but if uh, they're going to be okay i'm going to use the newly purchased one if not i'm going to use this one because it's not going to be so tragical at least uh, how the part where i have to attach it like uh, to attach it is going to look more or less okay that's why i don't think it's going to be tragic about this one so that's everything i need for the um, cube and the cube has a mouse on top the mouse the mouse should be stitched on 30 second count uh, um, pumpkin linen also by with that works this one i had in, in my stash i didn't have to buy um, uh, to buy it because it was a long time ago it was a cube by just and stitched on it so i had it um i found the um, um, how it's called, the tail for the mouse. The mouse is going to have in its hand a uh, uh, ghost. It's a sea queen ghost. I found this one as well. What I don't have for the mouse is the um, bottom, you know, that uh, antique brass button, which is usually used for, um, for the bottoms of the mice. I tried desperately to look uh, on internet uh, this kind of buttons I couldn't find. Uh, if you know how they are called and where they are being sold, I would be very, very uh, thankful if you would tell me. Um, I thought that I have two options, either to steal uh, the bottom uh, part from uh, a new mouse which I have in my stash, either to cut a um, small circle, I have this uh, felt, uh, um, wool felt, you know, uh, from... Uh, uh, Wix that works also, and it's the color pumpkin, just to cut a small uh, circle and use it as uh, the um, bottom. I'll see, I'll see. Ah, and uh, when I was use looking for the spiders, the small spiders, again, I found something which can be okay. I ordered that something. If it comes and it's going to prove to be okay, I'm going to show you what this, this one is. And maybe I'm going to use... Mm, that thing um and that's it that's everything i need for this design i'm going to start with the cube um slowly and nicely because i don't think i'm going to finish uh, until the end of october because still it's a lot of uh, i remember stitching this uh, this uh, owls uh, it took me almost two weeks uh, to stitch and uh, finish it and you remember for the, with this one also, it took me quite a lot of time to stitch and, and finish it. And I, I worked, I spent like time working with, on it. So yes, I'm going to stitch it nicely and surely because till the end it was uh, a design which I was dreaming to, to stitch. And of course, I'll let you know about the progress I have on this uh, project. And the next I wanted to show you is the progress I have made with the Haunted Cottage by um, Mill Hill because I have some uh, progress. Yes, this is how it looks like. Yes, this is my method of uh, stitching on uh, perforated paper. I mean like the large uh, kits, because the smaller ones, uh, you can hold the uh, perforated paper in your hand because that one is not large, it's like that. But this one is uh, pretty difficult. And if your mm, fingers get uh, sweaty, uh, you know, it's not so It's not so good. So what usually I do, so I have here the uh, hoops, which are on, um, which have this, how it's called, leg. They, they are LPC. They are very old. I have to buy new ones 
because this one here already it's not so good they are not too expensive uh, so i uh, the take a piece of fabric, piece of fabric meaning uh, old clothing. For example, this is an old t-shirt. Um, I take the perforated paper, fix it here, take um, a sharp needle, sewing, it's okay. I took here all the threads which are leftovers, not DMC. I don't know, from some kids I have a, a bag with uh, threads which are from uh, some kids from an old, old times and I'm using them for such situations and uh, just uh, attached uh, the paper here went on the back side and very carefully very carefully i just cut the uh, t-shirt fabric next to the sewing here you see and i have the paper because i'm not sewing like through the t-shirt and here is how it goes like um there are um, hoops special hoops uh, which uh, are made for this uh, perforated paper i know about that but i haven't bought so far because I haven't stitched on perforated paper for a long time and I just didn't feel the need to have uh, such special hoops. Uh, they're not hoops, they're kind of uh, um, frame, mostly, something like that. If I'll manage to buy them, I, of course, I'm going to show them to you. So this is what I have. Pretty good, I would say. It's being stitched pretty fast. I haven't expected this thing. But uh, because when I made the copy of the chart, I am um, uh, looking into it, but this is black and white, you see, I had the feeling that uh, it's a mix up. But now if you take a color, just one color of red, you can do a lot of stitches. For example, I took the black one and I went like this, like this, like this, and I made everything which is black on the uh, tree. Then this one, uh, the pole, this pole, I don't know whatever this one is, the... Um, uh, door and a little bit here and that's it I finished with the black one the purple this uh, shade of purple you see I started like here doing 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 everything and here and that's it so it's pretty pretty easy and um, the fact that you don't have to count the threads when stitching uh, it's pretty pretty nice <laughs> so I think this is going to be my kind of uh, design where I'm going to relax and do it stitch it and um, I don't know, maybe the next meeting with this design is going to be either the finished part. I'll see. It depends how I'm going to stitch this one. So maybe I'm going to show you one more progress uh, uh, stage or the finished one. By the way, when stitching Mill Hill, I'm doing, I think it's like in the instructions, but not because it says there, but because it's easier for me to work. First, what I do, I stitch all, I stitch all the cross stitches and half stitches if there are, but not very often you see half stitches in such designs. Then I do the um, so-called speciality stitches, yes. So I do the back stitch, the lazy daisy, the French knots. I will have uh, back stitch and French knots here, by the way. And then I attach the beads. So the last stage is attaching the beads, and even we. Even when attaching the beads, I attach first the petites because the petite beads, they come in cross stitch and they are smaller and they take longer time and you need the, uh, how they say, the field to be free of other beads. And then I'm attaching first the petites and then I attach the bigger ones because they come in half stitch and they are easier to attach and the quicker. Yeah, I know, maybe it sounds stupid and crazy, but this is how I work with uh, the Mill Hill designs and that's why I have only cross stitch here. Yeah. So... I'll see which is going to be the next uh, stage of uh, showing, showing you this one uh, progress or maybe the finished, uh, finished design. And that's everything I wanted to show you in today's video. I hope you liked it. I hope it was interesting for you and see you in my next videos. And me and Elvira, Olvira, we are telling you bye-bye.